Minister in the Presidency and Chair of the National Planning Commission, Mondi Gungobele, says South Africa needs an open, robust discussion to get the state back on track in building a capable and ethical state. The minister made his remarks yesterday during a public lecture hosted by the presidency to discuss the National Development Plan following the appointment of a new NPC in December last year. Gungobele said state capability is weakened by fragmented intergovernment relations, challenges of getting right skills in right jobs, limited performance management and an unstable political administration. Commissioner and NPC and Professor of Public Affairs at Twane University, Mashupie Maseru, uh, Maseru Mule joins us virtually to talk about it. Prof, thanks so much for joining us. It's good to have you. Uh, good morning, Leon, and good morning to, uh, to your viewers. So let's just, let's just ask uh, the, the opening statement. The minister and the presidency says South Africa needs an open, robust discussion to get the state back on track in building a capable and ethical state. Back on track? When were we ever on track? That's what I need to ask you. I mean, this is, I suppose, an ideal state which we're so far away from. Talk me about that statement. I think, I think we've always been trying to be on track and at some point in various epochs of our evolution as a post apartheid state, we've, we've really been making significant strides. Uh, unfortunately, um, um, at some point in our evolution as the post apartheid South Africa, so many unfortunate things happened, Leon. Um, if, if, if you listen to the sort of details that had come out of the Zondo report, you could see that um, 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 at some point, as we were evolving as the post apartheid state, uh, certain mistakes were made where the state was looted, where the state was hollowed out, and things that were really so uncomfortable. Um, and I think it is in that context that um, yesterday we had a very honest discussion about the state of the state uh, and also the state of the nation. And um, the minister was very forthright. Uh, he, was very dis he was very honest. And, um, and, and largely also most of the things that they talk about are based on the review of the National Development Plan itself, which also revealed that uh, we, we haven't really made such um, um, a significant strides in terms of recommending you know, uh, the great things that had been um, uh, recommended in the National Development Plan. So um, uh, the minister's talk yesterday was essentially around, the, around that, and also even the subsequent engagement discussions went around that. Obviously, as a nation, we cannot really afford to give up. So we should always try to make sure that um, um, we do whatever that we can to make sure that the state is back on its track. Hmm. Um, well, the minister also uh, yesterday reiterated that the country's NDP vision 2030 seeks to achieve an inclusive economic growth, diverse ownership of means of production, um, close to full employment of the South African population by 2030. This is uh, not very far away, eight years away from all of this and the end of that term to meet its goals. I mean, with an unemployment rate, just an unemployment rate at the levels that it is and no job creation and no growth in the economy, how do we honestly expect to reach these goals by 2030? That's a very good question, Leanne, because, um, um, and also um, uh, just earlier you were playing a clip about what, what is happening in, 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 in Alexander. Um, and that is actually an indication of, 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 of uh, fundamentally um, um, uh, challenging situation that we are actually confronted with, uh, poverty, unemployment and inequality. And uh, unfortunately, COVID-19 exacerbated the situation, but that does not really mean that we did not actually have that situation before COVID-19. And the extent to which the national grievance is actually saging, uh, we cannot really afford to, to pretend as if it should actually be business as usual. 
we need to make sure that we do whatever that we can. And the commitment that we're making, we need to make sure that we step up and try to uh, do as much as we can to really ad attend to the economy because if we attend to the economy, we are necessarily also um, uh, trying to deal with the question of, of poverty, unemployment and inequality. And these are the things that if we prevaricate we might actually find ourselves in a situation where um, 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 uh, the whole the whole thing becomes untenable. So it becomes critically important that yes, those commitments are made, and yes, we are not really that much far away from 2020. But we just have to really rethink how we have actually been doing things, and make sure that we step up and make sure that we do whatever that we can to really salvage the situation. Lately, you might have actually seen that the president even went to an extent of uh, in, enlisting expertise um, uh, from the private sector, where a uh, part of what he seeks to achieve is to, is to cut a bureaucratic gridlock uh, in the administration of the state to optimize systems and processes in the administration of the state and also to get um, 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 other aspects from the private sector uh, to lead you know, various sectors that are key to our development. Um, um, uh, to our development. So um, um, I'm saying all these things just to say that, yes, uh, you are correct that 2020 is not far, but uh, that shouldn't really mean that we should actually um, 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 uh, go, go back on our commitments because 2020 is, is, is nearer. We just have to make sure that we do everything that we can uh, to realize the commitment that we have made. Otherwise, the searching national grievance over time is going to be uh, unsustainable. And the moment when we reach uh, at that point, it will be so unfortunate for the country. And I don't really think that we can afford that. Yeah. Prof, you know, it, it, it almost feels we're already at that point. It does. I mean, you talk about the, the, you, you talk about the president calling on for the help of the private sector. He's calling on the help of the private sector to do things that his ministers should be doing. I mean, whether it's getting rid of red tape, whether it's helping small businesses, we've, we've got departments dedicated to this. Basically, he's just doubling up the work that his ministers and the government should be doing, but they are not doing. Um, we should be having an ethical, professional state, a yes. developed mental yes. state. We don't mm. have that. Unfortunately, <clears throat> it is just <clears throat> full of corruption and the ethics <clears throat> are what is missing. All of this is not materializing and this is a very, very big worry. Um, I mean, I'm quoting from Gungubele saying that a capable, ethical, professional and developmental state will not materialize through a decree or legislation. It has to be built and sustained through strong leadership that enjoys high levels of trust from its citizens. Problem number one, there isn't a high level of trust from citizens because citizens are watching what has happened. And since 1994, inclusive growth has not been achieved. How is this going to happen by 2030 when that trust is missing, when there doesn't seem to be anything? Yes, we can live with our heads in the cloud and say we must keep on going. But the reality is, how do you keep on going? It, 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 the state is making it impossible to keep on going. Leanne, um, 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 all those things that you are talking about, um, um, uh, fortunately also, if you listen to the leadership of this country, it's time that they speak. They speak to all those issues. And um, the first step is that at least uh, we are not sh uh, they are not shying away from, from what are the problems of this country. Um, um, uh, often, Leanne, um, uh, I, think, I think that um, we, we should really start to start from the beginning in terms of trying to build the type of the country that we want um, um, where accountability will be um, a, a fundamental principle not not just only uh, in theory but in practice because accountability can only succeed in a society which is empowered um, empowered in the sense of knowing exactly what are the plans of government um, in such and such a municipality so that if that municipality is not really doing what it's supposed to do, they could easily be able to hold that municipality accountable. I often used to say that perhaps 
uh, we should be deliberate in terms of trying to build um, um, a strong society with the capacity to hold government accountable. I, I used to say that perhaps we need to really start at the fundamental levels, uh, at the levels of 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 um, um, uh, making sure that we introduce what I call civic education at our learning institutions. Civic education is just essentially about uh, making sure that uh, kids, even at the lower level, start to understand that we are a constitutional democracy. These are our rights, and uh, this is how we should go about in terms of holding government accountable. Obviously, that is going to take time, but we need to be very deliberate, you know, um, 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 and that is what I often used to say, that for us to really get this country right, we need to build societal capacity to hold government accountable. And that can only be possible if citizens are highly informed about issues that relate to uh, uh, public affairs. Introduce civic education. Let, 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 because I used to say that when you look at institution of learning, I used to characterize them as an opportunity given to us to recreate society. So let's just try to make sure that we put more effort in terms of um, a taking an advantage of all these young people when they are still at the, at the schooling system, because ultimately these young people will, 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 will become, will become um, um, they are obviously uh, uh, the citizens of, of this country, mm -hmm. and at some point, we will be uh, uh, depending on them to hold government accountable. And some of them obviously uh, will work in the state and they will fully understand and appreciate uh, what does it mean uh, uh, to be in, 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 a, in, a, in a constitutional democracy. So, so these are the things that uh, I think we need to really start from the basic in terms of putting uh, together things that ought to be in place break yeah. by break. But yeah. we shouldn't really be impatient. Eventually, which we ought to get this country right. Otherwise, uh, we are in trouble, Leanne. Why? Um, and, and many would say, many, many would say we're in trouble already, Prof. Many would say that. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure how much more time because, you know, the reality is that the minister himself has said that the country at this point in time lacks capacity or capabilities of a professional workforce to actually deliver a capable developmental state. That in itself is one of the most worrying mm. statements to be made. I mean, mm. as an ac academic, mm. you yourself, mm. someone who has chaired a panel appointed to look into the professionalization of the public service, what is the audit of South African skills to meet that requirement for South Africa to move forward? Look, it's 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 um, um, uh, it's true um, uh, in terms of the the extent to which uh, um, um, uh, the state of the public service is actually not how it should be. Um, 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 uh, if you 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 interact with some of the things that are happening in various parts of the state, uh, in some local governments, you will literally get cases where. Um, um, uh, unfortunately, um, you are, you are, you are, you are, your unions are literally holding HR and recruitment practices at ransom. Uh, that is why, in many instances, uh, particularly in the local sphere of government, you'll find instances where there are so many people who do not really have the basic credential or other qualifications uh, to do what they've been employed to do. And, 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 and that is so worrying, and, and, and I fully agree with you. Um, um, and yes, we interacted with all sort of stories. Some of them were very shocking. But at the end of the day, um, um, we, we had to also um, um, make our strong recommendations. Obviously, I might not able to go into details in so far as those recommendations are concerned, because the report is actually still being processed. Uh, uh, the minister will actually pronounce on, on our report. But uh, the point that I wanted to emphasize is that we need to really um, uh, try to, yes, um, I hear you, Leanne, that we are already in trouble, but uh, maybe let, let's say, let, 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 let's try whatever that we can not to go beyond the point where we are. 
because if we got, we go beyond the point where we are, we are just we are just finished. You know. So all what we can do is that yes, I am I am I am glad that at least then even the, uh, the political leadership of this country do acknowledge that we do have a problem, and, and that to me is very important because the moment when people start to acknowledge that there is a problem, at least. There is there is there is a sense of hope that we can actually start to to move forward. Um, um, uh, there are so many things that some of us have been saying, and um, and uh, it is it is it is it is quite um, um, hard for me that in many instances when we interact um, with the political decision maker uh, decision makers, they, they seem to really realize that indeed. Uh, uh, some of the things that we've been saying um, uh, uh, should actually be looked into with a view of implementing them. And, and for me, that, mm. that's a very important start, you know, yeah, because we yeah, cannot okay. really, Leanne, afford to go beyond uh, the point where we are. All you right. know. Prof, Prof, thank yeah. you. Thanks. We unfortunately have to leave it. I'd love to, I'd love to ask you more, but I, I beg to differ with you that by just admitting <laughs> things are wrong, that's the right thing to do. No, no, that's not the we right thing to do. Admitting things yes, are thank wrong. Thank you very much. <laughs> it is, yes, we're at the bottom and that's the reality, but nothing's yeah. been done to turn the ship around and that is what is very, very worrying. And having incompetent people in positions such as yourself has said that we, we have got those people that are not qualified and they're still there. And they're not moving. That is a problem. But Prof, Watch I'm sorry. the space, Leanne. We are going We're to watching. make sure that this country wait. Watch the space. Thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Prof. Good. As long as you're happy, Bye-bye. that's the main thing. We'll get. We'll Bye-bye. keep watching Bye-bye. the space. All right. There Bye-bye. we go. So there's your commissioner of the National Planning Commission. Very happy at this point. Uh, professor of Public Affairs at Tswane University, Mashupia Maseramule, who is uh, a member of the new MPC, appointed for a five-year term as South Africa races to meet its goals for the NDP 2030 vision.